I'm, I'm in this boardroom now. I just had two meetings. And, and now they're talking about bringing dogs into some of these. And I'm like, what's the intent of the purchase? <laughs> if, if it's to protect endangered species, you probably should leave Fido at home. If, 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 if it's a, a ballpark and a nice grass land and you know, everyone can enjoy it and it's a lot of commotion and human and, and animal and whatever, a good fair mix, it's probably fine. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with that. But I mean, it, it, you know, I can tell you when the dog finds the gopher tortoise, it's going to play with it. If the dog, you know, finds a deer fawn, it's going to chase it. If it you know, <laughs> these things should be taken into consideration. And, and even as a control method, when you go into, like, we deal with feral hog issues. Um, they're a destructive species. Um, they're one we've been dealing with for 500 years, so it's not new to us. But it, 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 um, they are destructive to our wildlife. But here's the thing, when, they, when the county does these um, radical um, hog dog roundups, um, I testified against one a few years ago, what they do is they bring in these guys that do this for fun and for sport. But what happens is those hogs are more adaptable than your deer and your turkey and your quail. So, you know, you're stirring up all the stuff that's not intended to, to get things that have been dealing with this stuff since, the, since, since you know, Europeans got here. So it, it's, it, you know, I, I'd say that, yes, control methods should be in place and, and they are destructive to our native land. But you gotta, you, you know, radical, relief plans have side effects. <laughs> and uh, they should think, uh, you know, look into that. Uh, my background, I, I started my career at 22 um, as a, a young man going to college. It uh, used to be Manatee Community College, now SCF. Um, and, I, and I just walked in the door of Pelican Man's Bird Sanctuary in Sarasota, and they gave me my opportunity. <laughs> um, so. You know, I've been doing this ever since. I, it was my dream come true. Um, yeah, now they were the biggest center around, so I got a lot of advantages. They had 300 volunteers. They had biologists, veterinarians. I used to work with seven veterinarians a week. I mean, we just, it, I can tell you all four of the remaining larger wildlife centers in the Tri-County area together were that size. So our community has taken a loss, especially when you consider Peace River and Wildlife Inc., two of those centers, we're there doing the job and, you know, then too. So we really haven't replaced much. Our center is trying to replace the void of a much bigger center. Um, now we've networked with everyone to make that possible, um, but it, it is a huge area uh, for this. And it's not unusual. Arcadia, or, I mean, Manatee, or not Manatee, I'm sorry, Hardy and DeSoto County have no wildlife center. So, I mean, there, there's areas that are, you know, as I'd say the Tri-County area usually talk about the coastal side, there's nothing in Hardy and DeSoto. A lot of that goes to either us or Peace River Wildlife. They used to go to Sebring on the other coast, but they closed. So it's, it, there's a void in the center of the state. Um, our dedicated staff and volunteers, I said we have four staff. I have one person in, in the office, uh, two people in rehabilitation, and then myself. Um, like I said, I could use maintenance people. I could use, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Fixits. I could use more rehabilitators. <coughs> But you know we're on a we're on a tight budget. Um, In-house conditioning and our, our fit facility description. Um, we have a, a, you know our facility is very grassroots on a five-acre lot. But what we have is large aviaries built for uh, conditioning uh, birds and mammals and really getting them the flight space and the exercise time. And that's where we began the beginning of our growth. Now we're at a point where. I was going to talk about it at the end, where, where we've got the opportunity to buy the property that we're on now from the co-founder, and that'll do a lot of things for us, but one thing, it'll increase our medical potential, our reception uh, potential quite a bit, and I think that'll in turn help with fundraising and other things. Um, but uh, also, uh, that, that, um, that is a big burden because that's going to be you know a, a, an amount of fundraising we've never had to do, but um, now with that, uh, you know, we will we, we will basically move into the modern times. You know, after about five six years, I think. Um, and uh, you, you know, but um, our aviaries we've already got more uh, facility dedicated to aviaries than any other center anywhere around, unless you count um, permanent residents. Like if you go to Peace River Wildlife in Punta Gorda or Save Our Seabirds in Sarasota, most of our peers across the country uh, either have a zoo or a nature center to help bring in. 
uh, support and things. We've done most of it by going to your door. Um, so, you know, we don't really have a show facility. But, but what we have is a service that will go where the animals are, and that's how we grew so big despite some disadvantages. Um, now, one other thing is, if we own that property, we will get much more competitive with our peers in the future, and that all of them are also on $1 a year lease, uh, you, you know, facilities from local government. Um, we're on our own land, and um, you know we'll we'll have to pay for it, and, and you know to get to, to an even a more even playing field. Um, utilization of uh, 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 surrogates and conspecifics and rehab—that's the best tool any rehab center really ever will have. Is taking like if I get a great horned owl chick, um, you know if I can't put it with its own mom and its, and its own dad and its own nest, which is what I ideally do first then I might have one in rehabilitation with a hurt wing or a hurt eye or a hurt foot, and I'll put them to work. You know, they're getting free medical care and everything else, but, but guess what, you know? And you're the best chance for Junior. And I've had a lot of amazing stories over the years in, in birds and mammals where, you know, different species have adopted different ones in our care, and, and that's the most awesome thing other than reuniting with their parents. Um, but next to that, again, there's a hierarchy. So re returning them to their parents, uh, getting them to uh, a, con a conspecific or a true um, uh, uh, surrogate is important. Um, but the next thing is, you know, then you've got the conspecifics. That just means you might have like a baby raccoon and with some other baby raccoons, which is still hugely uh, important, but it's not the same as a mom or an adopted mom. Uh, but, now, but then you get down, you, at some level you get down to puppets, which is not near as good. It can be done, it can be done successfully, but it's not near as good. Uh, um, and then you get down to mirrors and, and you know, and you're, you're really, that's really the bottom rung of, of raising babies. But I mean, you know, we'll do it if it takes it, you know. <laughs> you got to do it again. Um, one of the centers I've always admired, a lot of people are familiar with them, um, the International Crane Foundation. Yeah. It's a little hot in Florida for, for those full body suits, but you've got to commend those people. They'll wear the full body suits and feed the babies with the crane arm. You know, it's, it's a, it's a, they wear a full blind suit, but then they have a very detailed puppet. Um, puppets can, and I have a good public collection, some places have really blown mine away. But, um, <laughs> but I mean, you, you know, you, you'd be surprised. I got quite a puppet collection and a basket collection. I didn't grow up thinking I'd have either. <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, these are tools that you use. Um, uh, the, um, the variety of species treated, we have to be able to re-gear up our facilities for different seasons, different unique species. You never know what we're going to get. I think it was a year or two ago, we got a bunch of those razor bills coming up and down the coast. Um, you know, everyone's calling about penguins washing up on the beach. And uh, usually when I, someone says they, they have a penguin washed up on the beach, they mean a pelican. <laughs> but this time they meant penguins, but it was really a razor bill. <laughs> so, uh, so, so centers all up and down the state got those, and, and you know, after their migration was disturbed, and um, you, you know, but I never worked with one before. I've worked with sixty thousand animals, you know, conservative estimate. I've never worked with one of those. I got to get out the books. You got to figure out what you're doing, you know, and uh, talk to the experts, their experience. Um, uh, diversity of needs. I uh, said so that um, average success rates. You know, if, if I just did pelicans, we got 356 pelicans in one year. That was the busiest year for pelicans, I remember. Um, but, you know, pelicans are relatively easy. Um, you know, now, some of them are horribly maimed with bow propellers or, you know, hanging from fishing line out of a tree um, or, you know, sometimes get hit by the car or a boat. Um, but most of the time, it's just a little hook in a wing or some tanglement um, or maybe a pouch infection or they might get a little red tide um, poisoning. Um, or maybe a little botulism, but a lot of these things are treatable. And um, I would say we could probably say we've released probably, you know, between 75 and 80 percent of our pelicans. But our overall success is pretty close to a national average, probably about 50 percent. And that, but I mean, now some species I have almost zero percent success rate. Um, now I said how pelicans are relatively easy. One of their close relatives we get a lot of every year, northern gannets. I lose most of them. Um, you know, um, loons, I lose most of them. Well, we save some every year, we try very hard, but there are certain species that are very difficult. And part of it's because now those two species spend more time away from humans, they're not hanging out on the beach, 
they're more in private, you know, areas where they're fishing or out in the bay. Um, so, so they don't, you know, it's very much foreign for them to be in a cage, handled, stressed, um, you know, and, and certain species, I think that's always been a big factor in rehabilitation. Certain species just stress out more. I mentioned the mammals, the big four. Rabbits, I get a lot of rabbits. I got plenty of experience with rabbits. Rabbits are hard. <laughs> I mean, compared to squirrels and raccoons and things, they're, they're hard. Um, now, raccoons are easy until you get disease, but they're, they're, they're prone to everything. So other than the diseases, they're very easy, very hardy, but you know, they got a lot of diseases to contend with. Um, and most of them aren't an issue for people. People always worry about them. It, it's, uh, uh, return home, uh, sadly, this is, this is very over redundant, but uh, it's very important to us. When I was at Pelican Man, they didn't really spend a lot of time taking animals back where they came from. And I started doing it more and more from experiences, and I saw some, and now I get people tell me, oh, it, it, it came out of the cage and went in the water and washed the human off and looked like it was at home and knew where it was at. And, let, and that's what I like to hear. I like to hear that they, they're right where they know where they're at and they don't have to look. Um, now, a lot of times I'll release an owl or an eagle. They'll, you know, sometimes they'll sit in the cage for a while, but sometimes they'll fly right out, land in a tree, and they'll sit there for five, ten minutes, get their bearings, and then all of a sudden they just take off. You know, I mean, but it, you know, it just depends. I mean, sometimes they, you know, they, they act differently in every situation. But I mean, you, you know, home court advantage really matters, and that's why you got to protect their home court. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, if you have to release them, you better make sure you have something to release them too. And that's hugely important, and um, and that's why um, you, you know, one of the things I've been fighting for lately, and when I was fighting that developer, was corridors. Connectivity between our wildlands are important. I, I heard a mention of rookeries earlier. Rookery islands are so important. Um, though, you know, connectivity between these special places and, and the, the, you know, those rookery islands are so important. The alligators and the sharks protect the birds from the mammals, which, you know, I'm, I'm not picking favorites, but, you know, certain, that, that's what certain animals need for their future. Um, you know, we see a lot of wood storks in this area, but they're still in danger. They're, they're really in trouble in their nesting grounds. Um, but I mean, you know, locally we see a lot of them, and so people don't see a problem. But their, their numbers are declining. Uh, they, so release, uh, a, a successful release is what it's all about. The true reward of any wildlife rehabilitation program. And that's when I worked at, at Moat Marine with whales and dolphins, that's, and that's a struggle in itself. Um, you know, working with, um, you, you know, Pelican Man or our center, uh, or our colleagues. I mean, that's what it's all about. I mean, you you know, you you see a lot of tragedy to get to that relief, and that's what keeps you going to that relief. Um, the ultimate goal of the Wildlife Center of Venice is to release a healthy, viable, all healthy, viable patients back to the wild as soon as they are deemed fit to do so, given their specific needs. So that's why I have those big flyways, and we're actually planning on building a 120-foot flyway for eagles. Um, uh, the, the ones that are legally required for is um, eagles, uh, black and turkey vultures, osprey, cara cara, and uh, I, I think, uh, I know the brown eagles on, or, or sorry, golden eagles on the list, but we don't get those. Uh, I think there's one I'm leaving out. But um, by law, you're required for 100 footer on those. That sounds great, but then there's only like 10 in the whole state. So you realize that I have enough to fill half of them. <laughs> so, so there's a problem. So we need one. We know, Peace River Wildlife does have one. We network with them. Um, but, um, you know, we got 14 bald eagles in 2011, and that was our record. Um, before that, it was 8 and 08. Uh, when, you know, when we got 11 and 11, I thought we were done, but we got three more. <laughs> um, um, some patient, and, and plus, and I say part of that is because we were right near the landfill, which is their salmon run. <laughs> uh, some patients unable to be released, released or placed in zoos or nature centers depending on their potential quality of life and the availability of such an institution. A lot of people go to a center like Peace River or, or former Pelican Man or, or SOS, and they see all the animals on display. The one I worked at had 300, and they were all just, um, you know, institutionalized because of physical injuries or mental impairments. Or and um, and, and I love that. It gave us a tool to, to save a lot of those animals. The part that gets hard for places is. They don't realize that for every one of those seats, even at a, even when you have you, you know 300 seats, you're euthanizing just as many more because there are state requirements on 
how many animals can fit in each cage based on different codes and specs. Different ca animals need different pool sizes and cage size, all of which I agree with. What I, what I don't like is that a lot of people lead people to believe that every one of those animals is institutionalized and it's not even possible. So, I mean, I, I find homes for things at zoos and nature centers all over the country, not as many as I'd like because, you know, if they were looking for this, they went and found it and filled it. Um, now, you always find uh, new facilities being built. You always find animals that just lost a mate and are looking for a replacement. Um, you know, they just built a new habitat and they want some representative species. Um, so we look very hard to do those things. Um, but we decided not to build those facilities at, at, our, at our organization for two reasons, or three really. One is because we didn't have the room to, to, to serve the whole region we want to serve and do that. Um, two, the county didn't let us when we went through our three year zoning battle. And three, my experiences with Pelican Man was the reason it fell was because every, when, every time the, the question of priorities came up, they prioritize the money makers instead of the, the, the money expenses. The patients are all expenses. So even though that can be a great tool to help fund what we do, it is a drain in the summer. <laughs> it's, you know, I can tell you that. Um, but it, you know, it, 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 if it's done well, like I think Peace River does a great job. I, I like the way they balance it. I think they balance both entities very well. Um, but some centers get into trouble when they, when they get into budget problems and they want to get the new exhibit built to make more money instead of maybe put money into that hospital that's been neglected for months. And so I'm someone that wants to build the rehab end first irregardless of the other end ever coming up. <laughs> um, but um, now I do require a net, uh, those facilities as well and then work very closely with our peers so that they can help us with that. Now in turn I climb the trees for them and uh, and um, you know we, we share veterinarians. Dr. Robin at Peace River is an awesome veterinarian, but sometimes she's not as familiar with something as one of my vets, so we'll swap back and forth. Um, you know, it, it's really about networking. Um, I think I have a slide coming up, until, uh, but um, really, it, it's those networking areas are really important. Like Boca Grande is equidistant between us and Peace River, and it's difficult for both centers. So working together is really how we cover. Um, why, uh, the five R's of, of, of outline addresses the who, what, when, where, why, and how the Wildlife Center of Venice accomplishes its ma mission statement, including its uh, continued dedication to education with a capital E. Uh, of course, our main educational goal is to prevent undue harm to wildlife, alert, to the, alert the public to our free services, and to promote the protection of our remaining habitats and ecosystems. My favorite part, uh, any questions? You can see some different topics that are, I'm thinking of, but I'm happy to answer any questions on any wildlife topic you can think of. Thank you very much. Thank you. You've mentioned Save Our Seabirds several times. When I lived in Tampa and her facility was up there, I was privileged to work with Lee, and I can't remember her last name. Lee yes. Fox? Lee Fox. She, she's no longer at Save Our Seabird, oh. um, but she has restarted a facility in Limama. I can't remember the name of it, but it, they had kind of a takeover. Um, it's uh, The director there now is David Pilsen, but Lee Fox is still in the business. She found out. I don't know if she was the discoverer of what Don, Don Dish detergent. She went to places with oil slicks when there were it was, in, it was in California, the International Bird Rescue and Rehabil Research uh, Center. They have Dawn dish soap labeled all over their company trucks. <laughs> and, uh, and it's 0.003% uh, more effective than palm oil. <laughs> well, didn't, wasn't it Exxon that that started from? They were one of the main funders. Yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. Valdez was the big deal. And there, there were a lot of centers, especially on the West Coast. She would train people on how to remove oil from the birds without removing 